Welcome to part four of lecture four of aerospace propulsion. So we're trying to think about some of the law sources in spark ignition engines. And some of these include the following. So the fact that we're dealing with transient and irreversible processes, um, which the thermodynamic cycle model doesn't capture. It's an open cycle, right? We're taking in new gas and expelling old gas each cycle. There's heat transfer to the engine cooling system. The composition and properties of the working fluid are not constant throughout the cycle. Um, and the combustion is something that happens at finite speed, which is something we'll talk a little bit about in the next lecture. Um, and also, of course, friction. So roughly, if we break down the law sources or the sort of where does the energy go in a spark ignition engine, um, a little over a quarter of it probably goes to useful work. About 40% um, goes to sort of leftover enthalpy in the outgoing exhaust gas, gases and also um, into the uh, pumping losses, which is essentially uh, the, the work needed to bring in fresh uh, gas into the cylinder and to get the old uh, exhaust gases out. Uh, friction losses is somewhere you know, around 12-13%. Um, and then the remainder is uh, heat transfer to the coolant. Now, of course, the auto cycle is our ideal model for these spark ignition engines. Um, and here we, we ignore the negative work loop um, for the intake and exhaust strokes, assuming that those um, just cancel each other out. And each process is simplified and idealized, right? So we assume there's no heat transfer during the compression or expansion processes. And there's no volume change during heat addition and heat removal. Um, so essentially this is assuming that all of the combustion happens instantaneously at the minimum volume. Finally, many performance metrics exist for these engines, um, but we're just going to talk about two of them today. Um, the indicated mean effective pressure and the overall efficiency or brake efficiency. So the indicated mean effective pressure, this is essentially the average pressure in the cylinders during a cycle. Um, this is a really useful metric um, because it's, it's actually really the average delta pressure in the, because it's, it, the whole cycle just moves up and down depending on atmospheric pressure, obviously. Um, but this is a useful measure because it's a measure that is independent of the size of the engine. Right? So this is one way that you can compare the performance of spark ignition engines of different sizes is by comparing your indicated mean effective pressures. The higher the indicated mean effective pressure, um, the more cycle work that you can expect. Sorry, I'm going back just to give you a little more information. So how do you calculate this? Essentially, you integrate uh, the pressure uh, versus volume and then divide by the, the delta volume from max to min, and that gives you the indicated mean effective pressure. And then the second one that we'll talk, we want to briefly talk about today is the overall power plant efficiency. Um, so this is just the efficiency of the uh, engine plus the efficient, or times the efficiency of the propeller to give us our overall system efficiency. And just to give you an idea of what kind of numbers are reasonable here in a typical cruise condition, uh, the engine efficiency might be about 30% and the propulsive efficiency um, is probably in the vicinity of 85%. So this gives us an overall efficiency in the, in the, or, in the vicinity of about 25%. And that's about as good as we can expect from a typical spark ignition uh, engine system. Um, we'll see you later. Gas turbine engine uh, efficiencies can be significantly higher than this. Um, and is one of the reasons that they're uh, uniformly used in higher performance and larger aircraft. So that's all for today. Um, we'll talk more about some of the details of the design uh, characteristics of spark ignition engines in the next lecture.